to be I know they're going they're going to flag it I'll just play some music and then I'll just delete it that's my shit right there can't play too much. They go. I'm gonna cut all this out in a bit. You know, I'm gonna start talking in a minute. Just want to let some people come up in the building, and then we could uh, get this conversation started today. We're gonna talk a little bit about, um, you know, Comstock. Let me see. Let me see. This song right here is my song. Like I'm driving, and I just want to, you know, play it loud, and I just want to feel good. This is the song right here, guys. Yeah, you got to like that song right there. This is my song right here. Say, if you know this song and you official with Island Boys Arrest, we're going to get us all that corny shit right there. Oh, my God. He's got you. On FanDuel Sportsbook, you customers you know, can bet you know, 31 yards on any team in the playoffs. This is my go-to right here. This is my feel-good song right here. I'm driving. YouTube is going to make me cut it off anyway. So I'm actually going to start the video from here when, when you come back and maybe watch it later. Boom. Salute, everybody. Fred White, Tales from the Pen. If you're new to the channel, go down and hit the subscribe button, click that bell notification, and make sure that the bell is shaded in. This way, anytime I do a video, you will know about it. Mr. Chill Will, salute. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Much love, man. You know, it's always love with you, bro. Always. Let me just get back here because I'm going to shout out everybody. You know, former Dollar Bill, Persona. What's that say? Personal or Persona? I ain't got my glasses. Persona. Shout out. What's that? Uh, C.O. Trenny. He said, my friend, hey Fred, my little cousin is 22, is currently fighting a murder charge right now. He's locked up on Rikers. He's the first time. And any advice you can give him during this time? I mean, it, it depends on the situation, man. You know, I would always just tell people, you know, you go in there, you mind your business. You know, you got to be you, right? But don't go in there being trying to be a tough guy because there's a lot of tough guys there. There's a lot of tough guys waiting for you. You know, he, he, what I would do, I'd go in, mind my business, see what's happening, you know, play the wall, you know, basically, eyes wide open, mouth shut, you know, always be on point, man. That's all I could tell him. I could also tell him, I could give you some advice, actually. I could tell him, don't get involved in gangs. Don't get involved with drugs. And, um, you know, I mean, no, no disrespect to the, to, the, to the homosexual, whatever. The, you know, that those three things is like, or gamble. And it's not bad. I'm not saying it's being bad, being a, you know, a, a homosexual. Is that, that's not a bad term, is it? Like, is that, I don't, because I can't even keep up. But, I, you know, it's not bad to be that. I'm just saying there's a lot of times in that, you know, in that the, the gay community in prison. I mean, these people are always fighting, you know, like husband and wives type shit. Appreciate, appreciate the love, man. Let's see who else. So, so yeah, man, that's what I would tell you. Nay! And they said, I hope you are not singing. You know what I mean, they, I mean, Stormwood, E-Love, my guy. Mr. BX, uh, Joe to see Wu-Tang. Oh, yeah, for sure. I was up on all of them R&B joints. Felipe, Mr. Executioner, no gambling. That's right, no gambling, too. Stay away from them Alicia Key. <laughs> That's a fact. You've got them, them dudes in there. That's what they be calling themselves. I told y'all that. You know what I'm saying? One of come through, being Spanish, talking about his name is J-Lo. I'm just telling you. I'm not lying. Like, I've, I've, I've met, you know, or a light-skinned one. They're going to call himself Beyonce. One used to call himself Haley Berry. I'm like, <laughs> stay away from the bullshit. It's kind of like what goes on in this YouTube streets, right? Sometimes you could tell a lot about a person... By, you know, this YouTube thing here. You could tell, mm, maybe they was involved in a lot of nonsense. Because they're involved in a lot of nonsense on here. 90% of the time, they were involved in a lot of nonsense on there. You see what I do? I mind my business. All that other shit that's going on on YouTube, you see what's happening? So much crossfire, so much things going on. And I just stay out the way. And that's how I did my bid. A lot of people, that's how I did my bid. Number one, my personality. Number two... You know what I mean? I, you know, I will fight. You know what I'm saying? And number three was sports. You know what I mean? Because people would rather pick on people that they're going to get away with it with. 
You understand what I'm saying? So the people that they're not going to get away with it, with, you know, it's like lions, you know, they see easy marks. What are they going to do? They're going to go get that mark, easy one, right? Are they going to go after the hippo or the rhino? They may, but they know the problems that are fighting a rhino is going to bring them. Well, trying to get a hippo is going to bring them. Go after the deer. So, anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to talk a little bit about Comstock. Because when I really last left you, as far as my story goes, as far as the jail situation is, I left, I left um, Fishgill Box. Right? So I'm getting out the box. Boom. It's put me on the bus because you don't know where you're going. You know what I'm saying? Unless, you know, like in some jails, you know, you, in no jail are you supposed to know. When they come into your cell, are you supposed to know where you're going? So when they're like, pack up, you want to transfer, you want to draft. You know, dudes be asking the police, oh, where I'm going? Like, they're not going to tell you where you're going. It's a security risk. You understand? Because if you're in transit tomorrow, you could tell your people, hey, I'm going here. Like, they, they, they think like that. They think like somebody's going to try to break you out or something like that. They're not telling you where you're going. That's part of their thing. So, boom, get on the bus. <clears throat> going to Comstock. I, you know, found a den. I'm going to Comstock. So you say salute, Jay. Comstock, anybody in New York State prison system will tell you is one of the the worst ones. Kaksaki Jr. You know what I'm saying? Like Comstock is horrible. So, you know, as soon as I got there, they put me, I think it was, don't quote me, 88 is like reception. I'm not even sure. I've been, I've been in so many spots, so many, I'm not even sure. Like, but I think 88 was reception, right? Come in, went to reception. And that was one of the spots where as soon as I walked in, when I searched it, when I searched the spot, when I searched it and went into the lock and all, I found like a little nail, like a little rusty nail. And I was like, okay, I got myself a little pick. Because that's what you gotta do. That's the first thing you gotta do when you go into a cell. Some dudes get all comfortable. No, you gotta clean that shit, but if you they won't let you do it at that time or whatever. You got to search that mother... You got to search your cell. Because you don't know what happened. The next person could have gotten something in the yard. They took him to the box. And now, you know, all they do is the police will come. They'll pack his shit up and they take it out. And they move the next person in that cell. But if he had something in that cell, if he had a knife, if he had some drugs, if he had any of that, and they come in the cell searching, even if it's the next day, like you just got in this motherfucking cell. And they come in and find a knife, guess what? It's yours. You feel me? So you have to, as soon as you go in, you have to search the cell. That was the only time ever I ever actually found something on my own. Because that was any cell I went to, I did it. And I found something in reception and Comstock. So again, as soon as I got there, you know, it was hectic there. But what happened was my boy E was there. And then my boy Red was also there. Now Red, shout out to Red. Red had caught a couple. Red caught a homicide actually on Rikers Island. Yeah, they beat a kid. So I don't know what happened, but he got a he he gang us gang something, and he had twenty five years, and he beat it. I know Red is home. Shout out to Red. That's my boy Amir. So Red was there, and Red had shit under control under a certain umbrella. You understand? I don't get too detailed. You already know how I do. Nah, I don't have a peel, but I keep meaning to get a peel, but I always say I'm going to get it. I just never do it, guys. I'm so fucking disgusting. Sam and I are here. No school today. Shout out to Sam. What's going on, Sam? I hope you're doing good in school, brothers. Stay out of trouble. Sam, Sam's an Iowa kid. You know what I'm saying? He watches. Turned his life, you know, listening to me. You understand? So, sometimes when I get sidetracked and I say I don't want to do this, I think people like that, like Sam, who's right here in the chat. You know, because I'm going to be honest, guys, is, you know, I was about to put the retirement video out, seriously, because I'm going to be honest before I get back to this Comstock thing. Sometimes, and I know other creators who are watching this, because I know they watch me, because they, some of them, most, a lot of them just repeat what I say, shout out to them, but they don't give me no, you know, they don't shout me out, but whatever. So, I know you're watching. 
is that sometimes when I'm up here, peace, peace, Dan Allen. When I'm up here and I'm telling my life story to you guys or, or bringing up certain scenarios, and I realized it in the last live I did with you guys, about 24, 24 minute mark, 25 minute mark when I was talking about the corrections officers and how they beat me and how they hog tied me and how they carried me out of a cell like I was a rotisserie motherfucking pig banging my head and I got emotional. You know what I'm saying? I don't come y'all caught it and I had to compose myself because it's not easy. I'm going to get to the chat in a minute. It's not easy sitting up here reliving the worst times of my life. It's not easy sitting up here telling you guys who I am and the shit that I've been through in hopes that these kids see it. Because you guys know I don't do this shit for glorification. Some people just come on this internet to be seen with no end goal. My end goal was never that. My end goal was just to tell some stories so I can address some of these kids. And I have done that. And in fact, some are in this chat right now. That was, was my whole intention. And I've been doing it for two and a half years. And I felt that there's enough videos up there for my message to be out there. I didn't really want to do it no more. So to be honest, I may slow down and just, you know, periodically pop in, you know, and not officially retire. But it takes a lot out of me emotionally, man, to relive this type shit. Just think of just as, as an audience, right? Just think of your like some of your worst times in life. And then you up here and you telling the world about that shit. And, and, and for me, when I'm reliving and when I'm talking to you guys, I'm actually in that moment, man. I can't separate it. I'm in that moment when I'm getting beat up. I'm in that moment when that police's boot was in my fucking face. I'm in that moment. And sometimes it takes a lot out of me, man. Keeping it 1,000%. And I know other content creators, maybe they can relate to this. Maybe they can't. Thank you for the donation, Jay. I appreciate you. And I appreciate everybody who donates. But again, anybody want to donate, hit the cash app. Tales from the pen, just like this, because they take 40% or something like that of this. So you send me 10, they take it four. You send it to my cash app, I'll get it. I'm just saying, I'm not soliciting, I'm just... Because I see people that donate. And I appreciate the love, though, always. But again, but again, so I appreciate it like that because and people like that appreciate me. Chill, will preach. Because, you know, it's really hard, I'm telling you, man, to relive this fucking nightmares. And sometimes I, you know, not sometimes, pretty much every night I have nightmares and, 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 and bad dreams. You know how many jail dreams I've had? You know how many dreams where I've been chased and you know how many dreams where it's just like, what the hell? And a lot of it, I feel like when I'm reliving this, I'm like later at night dreaming about it. And it affects me mentally, it affects me emotionally. So if I don't, you guys don't see me all the time, you know, Fred gonna pop in and out. My message is out there. You understand? It's just emotionally and mentally, I was ready to give up on this channel. I was ready to... To give up on this channel. Yeah, 40-something people. No, get them likes up. What's going on? Everything's good, Lakeisha. I appreciate you. I see Lakeisha in the building. So, sometimes people, so the people who ask me where I've been, that's where I've been. I just, I'm good. It's just sometimes this drains me, man. And sometimes it make, it, it, it's, it's like a... a uh, like the opposite of that too, because I get, you know, fulfillment talking to you guys and, you know, convers you know, having conversations with you people and on the sides and the comments and, it, you know, it keeps me going. That's the truth, man. But it's not easy up here telling you, you know, times I almost got stabbed. It's not easy telling you, you know, times I got a, a black eye. It's not easy telling you about, you know, me stabbing somebody. That shit's not easy even to do it. A lot of people talk that shit. I would just stab somebody. Man, it ain't that easy, man. And then in that moment, like, it's like an out-of-body experience. Like, you're watching yourself do this. And it's like a dream when you stab in a cut. That's what I'm saying to you guys. Only those who really know can understand it. And then sometimes it's just my, 
you know, reliving that shit, it just, it, it, it's not good for me. It may be good for people to hear my stories, but sometimes it's not good for me, y'all. So if, I, if I'm in and out, man, you guys already know, it's nothing but love. You understand what I'm saying? That's the real. Um, King speaks real. I appreciate you, Lakeisha. You already know what You're one of the good ones. Definitely an asset. I appreciate it, man. Greg, what? Craig? Bringing all love, man. J, was that J.I.? I can't see. Jen, J.N., my dude. Sana, Caitlin, I see you. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate everybody in the building. So back to Comstock, right? <clears throat> Comstock was... Anyway, yeah, so like I said, my man Red was there, and Red, that's, that was his name, though. That was, that was, that was, I'm giving you his, that was his real shit. Red had a certain organization, you know, you know, status. So as soon as, and that's my guy for years, before he was, you know, organization. Before he was what gang he was down with, before all that, that was my guy. So when I pulled up to Comstock, and then my man E was there. My man E was with me in uh, uh, Otisville, too. And E had stabbed somebody in Elmira. So he had did like, yeah, so we both almost came out the box at the same time. He was there like maybe a month or two. He, he from Harlem. E be up there right now, 127. That's my boy. Shout out to E. So... You know, I knew a few people there. My, my little man Rock was there. And then this kid, Les, he was like running the rotunda. Had like a rotunda area. He was like that. So, you know, right away I was, I was good. Red pulled me up there, you know, where he was at. But, you know, in that gang, they had all their whole own shit going on. And that's the thing. Even though you may be cool with a certain, you know, that gang business is gang business. That's got nothing to do with me. You understand what I'm saying? So... I was good there, but Comstock was the worst, and, and I was only there, not even, I'm going to tell you guys a story, finish that. So Comstock was the worst, dirtiest prison I've ever experienced in life. I think I've been to nine, right? So it was the worst front, worst one. All good, young, a young wise in the building. I ain't seen you in a minute, man. Salute, my brother. So <clears throat> Comstock, like I said, was the dirtiest place. Comstock had roaches everywhere. Anybody been to Comstock is going to put it in the comments. It, it, roaches, water bugs. Comstock had bats. Bats. Like fucking bat flying around the fucking tier. Like what the fuck? Clinton did too. But bats. But most of all was the mice and the rats in Comstock. Smash that like button in here, man. I'm, I ain't even talking no more. I'm going to wait. You guys play too much. 20 fucking likes, man. I got 50 people in this. Come on, man. I'm going to wait one second before I continue my Comstock story. This is crazy. Get some likes up. So, so uh, this is what I used to do. I, I, I started to write a little book, I told you guys, and then that segment of it is called Ninja Mice, this chapter. Yeah, it's got some haters, man, or some other YouTubers looking for some more content to steal. Anyway, it's it's crazy. When you go to certain these other... They are saying like... It's, anyway. So, Comstock, they had what's called Ninja Mice, right? I used to put a line from the, from the door, from the cell front door to the back vent, right? It's a line. And you what you used to do is you put your clothes over the line, like a clothes line in your cell. Okay, boom. I used to take the bread because when you go to con, when you go to concert and you're leaving the mess hall, you can take four pieces of bread with you back to your cell. Okay, so you could take four pieces of bread, leave the mess hall. You're walking out. You you drop your silverware or whatever what because you have to you have to drop it and show the police. Yeah, you drop my spoon. If you lose your spoon somehow, you're going to the box. It's a metal spoon. You're going to jail. so. You show them, hey, I got four pieces of bread. Don't have five. If you have five, they're going to tell you, throw one of those pieces out. Like, bro, I got five pieces. What's the big deal? You can only have four. This is the bitch shit some of them dudes is on up there. Like, 
Like, yo, why you acting funny? Or then it'd be like, yo, you'll turn around and your boy only got two here. Take this piece of bread. It's like crazy, right? Like you could, so I used to take my bread. I used to put it in a bag. And I used to hang it. Hear me now. From the clothesline, in the middle of the clothesline. It's hanging, my line is hanging in the middle of my cell, dangled like a tight, it's on my tightrope, right? In the bag, on the t on that, because if you leave your bread or food or anything like that, in your line, wherever it is, they, they getting in it. So I said, man, let me put this shit on this fucking clothesline. Only to wake up in the middle of the night. And these motherfuckers is in my bag. Appreciate you, chill, Will. Thank you, brother. These mice crawled across the fucking clothesline. Look, across the clothesline and got in my bag that was suspended in the middle of the cell. If that's not ninja mice, I, that's what I used to call them. They were ruthless. In Comstock, I'm not joking. Anybody, anybody that's been there, comment, link, whatever, they will tell you Comstock was the dirtiest, nastiest. Fuck. He said, he said you hang your food out in the wild to get out the way, but my yeah, he said, it was like that, bro. It was like that, and he motherfuckers crawled across. I don't know if they did it backwards. You know what I'm saying? Forward. I don't know what. The in my fucking bag suspended in the middle of the air. Just like that. I'm like, yo. To be honest, I was glad I kind of left. Comstock was, like I said, Comstock was wild too, but I was good. Noe, shout out to Noe from the Bronx. Styles, Chris Styles from Queens was there. Uh, you know, like I said, my man Red E, Rock. It was, it was a, Little Bop was there. You know what I'm saying? Little Bop didn't stay too long. For Little Bop from Harlem. Because Little Bop and them started something in Kaksaki. I think it was a, like Death Before Design or something like that. They started like another little crew and they went at it with another gang and it was crazy. It was like on site. So Bop didn't stay long. Bop was a cool little dude. Shout out to Bop from Harlem. So I was there. So what happened was I didn't get all my bags yet. When you travel from jail to jail, you can only take four draft bags. Okay. Which are like, I don't know how do I... You ever see like people with the potato sack races or something? Those are draft bags, but you know, not the brown ones. They're white. They're called draft bags. This is where you put your stuff in when you're going from jail to jail. You can only take four with you for free. Anything over four, you got to pay for like a, like a fucking FedEx type shit. You see what I'm saying? So... I was there for a while. My my a lot of my a couple of my bags still ain't come yet. I had like eight or ten bags, something like that. And a lot of my bags still didn't get there yet. So finally my bag, when you know, my bags came, blah, blah. And I had on these Reeboks. I never I have a picture of them somewhere. I had on these Reeboks, man. And they were mountain sneakers. And I had got them in the medium and they let them in. It was fine. So I got the sneakers, boom, so re they were, shit was hot too. And um, so I go to the yard and I'm go, you know, waiting on the line and shit. And they're like, you know, they're picking people to go through the magnometer, whatever the hell it is, to pick me, go through the magnometer. I always get picked no matter what. It's just the way it is. You know, just the way I walk, the way I talk. And then they, you know, they didn't like me up there. They none, you know, that's just the way it was. But so, you know, go through the magnometer. Take your shoes off. You take your shoes off. You put them up there. My, whatever they did with them, my shit started. Do, 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 do. She stopped ringing. Now, maybe I walked through and then they say, take your shoes off. So then maybe I took my shoes off, walked through again, and it didn't ring. So now they, they're on to my shoes. Do, 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 Fucking shoes going off. I'm like, the fuck? I'm not even, I'm, I'm not even, because I know I don't have nothing in my, sh I know it. I have nothing. I'm not hiding nothing in my shoes. I ain't even thinking about this shit. I'm like, man, your metal detector's bullshit. You know, I don't even know what, you know what I mean? Like, whatever. I wasn't really talking shit, but I'm like, I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. Do, 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 do. Motherfuckers ripped my shoes apart. Took the soles out. Look. 
there was a little metal shank. And it's not a shank. It was part of the sneaker. It wasn't, I didn't put it there. It was the fact it's, it came with the sneaker, a little metal piece inside the sneaker on the, in the, like the sole or whatever. Ripped that shit up and gave me weapons charges. And I just got out the box. I ain't been out the box like not even three weeks, a month. I've been in Comstock, not even. I just got out. Doing long-term box time and all that shit, man. A year and some change, I was in the box. Like, I just left the fucking box. They played dirty in Comstock. Motherfuckers locked me up, ripped my sneakers apart, took the we took the and charged me with weapons. I went in there. I had the soul. Give me the sneaker. I had the soul of the sneaker. The soul. I brought it to the judge. When you go to, to, it's called like a tear hearing. They locked me up, bro, and brought me to something. I don't know where the fuck they A8, whatever the long keep lock was. And when I went to the hearing, I brought the soul so they could see it was part of the sneaker. And they still found me guilty. Guilty of weapons. 90 days. They gave me 120. I ended up doing 90 days. Send me back. And I left Comstock. They sent me the green double bunk box. Where I was there for a few months. You know what I'm saying? With a bunch of people. Ham. I think. Um, shout out to Polo. You know, Polo. Polo. Be on here with Mac and all that. Polo was there. My little man Bush was there. Wally was there. You know, Rudy was there. We had, you know. And I, because I, here's the thing. When you doing so much time, so many years. You know, at this time I had 10, 11, 12 years. You know people, it's just the way it go. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? From Kaksaki days, from Rikers Island days, I run into all these dudes later. You understand? That's how it was. So I was there. I ended up, you know, but Comstock, back to Comstock. Before we get there. Comstock, it was the worst. I, I mean, I guess it was kind of a blessing in disguise, to tell you the truth, man. Because there's nothing good about Comstock. Now, there's no good about a lot of prisons, but some of them may have their... You know, close if you're an hour or two away from the city where your people can go visit. You understand? It has a little. Then there's at jails that are eight, nine, ten hours away. You understand? And Comstock was like more in the middle, four hours, five. It was like toward Albany, Great Meadow. Um, um, you know, towards Albany, something like that. You know, but it was like four four hours as opposed to nine, ten. So some jails have, but Comstock is not good about Comstock. Even the even the four hours for the visits, like I would rather be way up in a, in a different spot. You know what I'm saying? Because again, the police there they they don't play. The police there they were ruthless. And then that was really like when that gang shit was really crazy. You know what I'm saying? Whatever little war was going on between two factions, it was over. But then a lot of infighting started with a lot of these gangs. You know what I'm saying? And and these dudes was, you know, warring amongst each other. Comstock Yard was like, <clears throat> I'm not even going to say like a Vietnam or none because I wasn't there. And I don't mean no disrespect to anybody who was in Vietnam for them to say, you can't compare that. But I'm telling you, Comstock Yard, it was like every day. I've only played a little bit of basketball there, you know what I'm saying? Because my man Lottie, rest in peace to Lottie, was there. My man Lottie Christ. Lottie Christ was nice and ball. So I only played a little, and, and he was too. I only played ball like a couple times. Like Comstock wasn't that kind of place. Comstock wasn't really a place for you to be really be running around playing basketball in the middle of the yard. You know what I mean? I played maybe once or twice messing with Lottie because I knew Lottie. Lottie, Lottie he, he got killed up in Harlem. That was my guy. So, you know, I messed around a little bit, but nah, Comstock was more than like play the wall, observe, watch, see what's going on. It's definitely one of those spots. This is weird. Oh, shit. I didn't even know that, bro. My bad, young wise. Good. Let me try to do it right now for you, man. Boom. I didn't even know that. I got you, son. It's there. You know what I'm saying? So maybe it was a blessing in disguise because Comstock was just horrible. But then I didn't want to go back to, but you know, I'm already a skinny motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I was anyway, like I still am, but 
And then, you know, when, you, when you're in the solitary confinement, you're not really eating. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and I'm like, damn, I just, I probably went to commissary one time. And I'm already back in solitary confinement. I'm just like, man, what is wrong? And, you know, these are the times when I would always used to reflect, like, damn, why me? Like, what the fuck? Why you? Why not you? Stupid. Why not you? You know what I mean? What you know? You made these choices. You made these life decisions. As I'm looking at myself in the mirror, you did this to yourself. You have nobody to blame but you. This is my mirror I'm talking to. As I'm confined to a cell by myself. A lot of green. I there was like several weeks where I was by myself. And the crazy part is when I first got to Green, they put me in what was the, called the shower cell. Every, every, in, this is double bunk box they built on Green Correctional Facility. Green Correctional Facility is actually a medium and across the street is Kagsaki. But on the grounds of, outside the grounds right there, they built the boxes. That's what I'm saying. So it wasn't like green box, medium box. No, this was a super max medium box that's built on their grounds. You see what I'm saying? And I got what was called the shower cell in the whole jail. This, because every, every cell has a shower that they control. They control it. This cell, I could press the button and the shower would come on. So, you know what I'm saying? I had the shower cell. You know what I mean? But, you you know, if you get caught taking a shit, you know what I mean? Just, just, you know, I should jump in once, you know what I'm saying? Real quick. You know what I'm saying? A few minutes, dude, the police already made his rounds. I already know he, he's not coming back for another. You know what I mean? Jump in. And you know what our recreation was? Now, this is what I'm saying. Pick, pick some. I need, this is why I do this shit. I need these kids to understand. This is what my recreation was. In Fishkill Double Bunk Box, where I did well over a year and change there, we used to come out onto our little porch, our little cage, and there used to be light poles. Like in front of every cage, there was like a light pole. And our entertainment every day, because there's nothing to do in solitary confinement, our recreation was coming out. On the top of those light poles, there was always a bird. The big seagulls, you know what I'm talking about? There was always a seagull on every top of the, of, of every, you know, of the, the lights. And we used to sit there and I used to say, yo, I bet mine, we used to bet push-ups or something. I'll bet my bird in front of me, because every cell, like right in front of the little post, I'll bet you just, that my bird stays on his landing longer than yours. Because what would happen is the other seagulls, it must be like prestigious thing to be, a, other seagulls would come and they'd be like, wah, wah, kick him up, and then like kick each other off the fucking, the top of the light. I can't make this shit up. This was our entertainment. This was my entertainment for almost 16 months. What? Think about that. Think about that next time you're ready to make a dumbass decision. I said, be like, I'll bet my bird hold it down. And then we bet, you know, playing around, 20 push-ups, bet 25 push-ups. You don't even know if he's doing it because you can't see him. You be in a box with somebody, unless you get visits or something, and he could look at you through the glass. You'll never know who your neighbor, if you don't get a visit, you will never see your neighbor once. You don't know what he looks like. Nothing. I bet you my bird hold it down longer than yours. Bet. And then we just sit there and wait until and then they start, what? All the, all the birds start coming. The birds start fighting. Woof, and I'll be like, I told you all. You know what I'm saying? This was the entertainment. And fish and green. You used to be able to look out to the road. Okay? And we, you know, well, we used to just sit there and watch the cars go by all day. You know what I'm saying? Yo, the next one, that's the one I'm going to be riding when I get home. And the little fucking Pinto come past. The motherfuckers are laughing. That's what you're going to have. Ah. No, the next one is mine. Then the range come through. Yeah, there we go. I was close, suburban, but whatever. My point is, who the fuck wants to live like that, man? 
Who wants to live like that? When it, when it causes go, and I used to be yelling out, picture me rolling. That was when Pac was picturing me, and everybody be, as soon as the car go past, you have picture me rolling. We go to the window to see what kind of car, because that means it's a nice one. And then the other one, seagulls on the top of a fucking lion post. Think about that, man. Think about that the next time your ass about to do something stupid. That's the life I live. Again, not on no victimization shit. Oh, what was me? Shit, I fucking chose my life. I, I chose my life. I, I did it. I did it. I could have went to jail for the rest of my life, and I didn't, and I always was grateful for that. Because a lot of people always me, how did you? Because I knew I was going to get out, and I had a thousand people around me who had a hundred years. I only had seven. I ended up doing almost 16. Because that's how it is. That's how it goes. I see all. I signed out. They were still trying to get me more. Like if they could, I'd still be there. I did two thirds of my time. There was nothing they could do. I signed out. Scariest day of my life. One of them. Signing out. And them telling me to go walk through. I can leave. Okay, go push the door. I'm like, I'm thinking I'm going to get shot. I swear on my kids. Because I'm already institutionalized. I don't know what the fuck to do. I've been in here since I'm a teenager. I'm in my 30s now. I'm going out to a whole new world and they're telling me to push this door open. I push the door open and like, okay, at the gate we're going to buzz you so I can touch the fences. I'm thinking it's like going to electrocute me. I can, I can just touch it and open the door. What? Opening the door. I'm in the parking lot still thinking I'm going to get sniped. Because it was still, I'm still, left some good dudes back there. You know what I'm saying? I came home from Adirondack. We're going to get the, you know what I mean? I mean? You know, my guy Shaolin was there. He's up in Kansas right now. Shout out to Shaolin, my man Nitty, Cap. But, I mean, I had a crew there. Forget it. Adirondack, my man Naquan, my other man Naquan. Not, 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 you know, my other brother Naquan. Like, I had, we had an ill team. My man Nitty, crazy there. Left. Left Guns, Harlem, this is my brother. He, he's got 14 in the feds, another story. But my man, Aunt Mascuzio, he got, I think, eight in the feds. They were going through rooftop. I mean, these dudes all came home. They did, but I'm just saying, my crew in that run was crazy. But that's later on. We're going to get to the chronology. You know, we're going to, let's save that for another video. I didn't really have a long one on Comstock because I wasn't there too long. I wasn't there too long, but I can honestly say from the time I was there that I, you know, overall the wildest was Kaksaki. I always say that, but Comstock wasn't that far behind. Mm -mm. Every single day there was something going on. Every single day somebody got stabbed in Comstock Yard. Every single day somebody got cut in Comstock Yard. 100%. Not exaggerating. Not trying to, because I don't have to do that. I'm telling you, it was a war zone, literally. None that I was involved with. None that had to do with me. But being around it and seeing it and not knowing if it can come, like, it's just a crazy life, man. And this is why I do what the fuck I do. So these kids don't have to live this crazy life that I lived. Talking to myself in the mirror. Watching birds on a fucking lamppost. Watching cars go by wishing it was me. It's crazy. Hold on. Let me get back in here. Ra. Shout out to Ra. I just tuned in. Tuned into the beginning of your show. I heard you mention a guy, J-Lo. He, she is on a podcast on YouTube. I don't, I don't know if that's, you know, I don't know if that's the same one or. Cause they all, you know, a lot of the Spanish ones call themselves J-Lo or Selena or. So, I, I can't, I just, oh boy, J.I., oh yeah, Rams defense looking good. D.K. said, how about my mother, oh shit, we, I never, I never met a, a fucking, a Bengal fan in my life, shout out to Bengals, man. Our, our Revere, uh, Revere, I'm sorry if I say it wrong, my brother, I would say Revere, that's how I would say it. Uh, let's see, just give everybody some shout outs because I got to go pick my kids up. Raz, yeah, I'll be kicking the truth. That's why I think people relate to me, Raz. And the people who've been there, 
I try to paint a picture for the people who haven't, but the people who've been there, that's why dudes don't really come because they know I've been there. I did that. I've seen it. And everything I'm saying is facts and truth. And everything when I'm, I'm saying is not for glorification. Everything that I'm saying is so that, you know, so hopefully some kids somewhere, it doesn't matter who, that I could change their life with some of this stuff that I'm doing, man, with some of these words. You know what I mean? That's my only purpose. I don't care about, I never was an internet, I never was an online dude, I didn't never, I didn't have Instagram, you could see, until I got this, I don't, it's not what I did, it's social media is not my thing, Facebook, Instagram, and this all came together, you can see it, I did YouTube, then I put Instagram and Facebook up, just to do it, but I'm not, it's so, it's like weird, even to some people that I'm even doing this, you know what I'm saying? Because it never was my thing in the first place. So you guys know I don't come up here with that bullshit. I come up here in real. And I appreciate you, Raz, for telling me, man. For, you know what I mean? Board channel. Far rock. I'm going to be coming out there, too. Because, you know, I did the Brownsville one with my brother, Naquan. I'm going to be coming out there with my boy, Rondu. Far rock legend. Uh, he He's from Red Fern. He, my boy, Rondu, he's from Red Fern. Shout out to OG Drac too, man. My man OG Drac from Far Rock. He's not doing so good, man. He's trying to get his. He's trying to bounce back right now. Shout out to OG Drac from Far Rock away. Um, off topic. Just wondering, in all your time, have you ever run into mafia guys? Not really. A couple. Tony the Roach, Young Wise asked me about mafia guys. I ran into Tony the Roach and um Clinton. A couple other dudes. A couple other Tonys. A couple of other uh. When I had just got to Kaksaki, I think uh Persico just left. I think the Sun. Was it Teddy, Carmine? Wait, when, I don't... Teddy, I think. You know what I'm saying? When I had just got to uh, Kaksaki, the Italian crew was deep there. Like, the Italian crew in Kaksaki, the police used to bring in food, like how you see on Goodfellas, but not to that extreme. Yeah, there were some uh, captains that were Italian, and they used to take care of these kids. Right before I got there, like, everybody used to tell me all the stories and shit. True story. Let me see who else... I just want to shout everybody, man. Steve, yeah, Raz, I appreciate you, man. That's right, jail is not a place, man. That's a fact. Lou Gambino. Oh, also, my, yeah, my guy Anthony Mascuza, as I was just talking about, if you look him up, they were going through Brooklyn. They were going through banks. They, like, built sheds, wood sheds, painted them black, little ones, and went, and went on the roof at night and put the sheds in so people from the outside couldn't see, and they were welding through the fucking roofs, going to people's... Uh, He's in jail, though. Young Wise, to answer your question about Young Mom. And his father was one of Gotti's guys. Lil Gambino, shout out to you, my brother. I just want to shout to whoever else, man, because I don't, some people get stuck in the system. Salute. And the Crows. You already know. I was in a box in Fishkill when the, when the beat up squad killed the dude. Oh, you, okay, look. You see what he just said? Killed a dude. Shake my. You see what he said? Right here. Up, if you go up top, stuck in the system. He wrote, I was in the box in Fiskill when they beat up squad, killed the dude. Man, they was the ones who really the only things I was worried about. That's a fact, because they beat you up. Yo, stuck. I'm going to tell you the kid's name. His name was Elliot Pagan. Now you know I know. Like, if, if you were there, then you know that that's who it was. His name was Elliot Pagan. And they beat him up and said that he broke his neck doing push-ups. Come on, man. Come on. It don't get no realer than that. I don't know him. He don't know. I'm telling you, that's who got killed. That was his name. It's crazy. Machete Street. Caitlin, salute. Always, always my guy. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Chill Will. You now I got love for you, man. That's a fact. I told you, I don't even, I pull up. You in New York, so I'll pull up on you, man. All right, man, I got to go get my kids, man. I love you guys, man. I appreciate it. I'm going to try to get up here a little bit more, but, you know, I already explained the situation. I'll come up here and start doing lives with you guys. Let me see. Anybody else? Uh, hey, Chief, I've been watching you for a minute. Never been behind the walls. Uh, I appreciate you, man. Hey, Chief, Young Wise, going to get you. Much love to South Philly. Shout out to Wallow and Gilly. BK, what's up with the sports talk? I know. It's, I'm just being lazy. I'm a sports guru. I changed the sports channel too to Guru Sports. If you see, if you're subscribed, if you haven't subscribed, go to my please go to my sports channel, please right now. Just it's called Guru Sports. G U R U Sports. That's it. 
And then I'll start doing more videos. I'm going to start doing videos. I always say I'm going to do it. It's just that life gets caught up with me, people. Three kids working. It's like, you know what I mean? It's real life. It's crazy. Yo, listen. Got to go get these kids, man. Love you guys. Appreciate it. Salute. Peace.